والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وان الله لمع I was 22 when I became Muslim. I was a bit younger than that when I accepted Islam. But I make a distinction between accepting Islam and actually becoming a Muslim. So the first thing I really remember, um, of course, about Muslims and meeting Muslims was when, when I went to Egypt. Um, my parents were living there. So... Um, those were my first experiences meeting Muslims going to a Muslim country. It was a very strange experience, I have to say. I mean, the thing that sticks in my mind is that how generally happy people were, even though they didn't really have any reason to be happy. I mean, according to Western standards, according to Western standards, the reason to be happy is when you've got a nice car, you've got a nice house, you've got a nice, <clears throat> you've got a nice girl, right? Um, and you've got lots of money to have a good time and then you're happy, right? I mean, that's the Western standard of happiness. But if you go, well, you go to Egypt, I mean, certainly when I went there, you didn't see that. People were extremely poor. And poverty was, the immediate thing you notice was poverty. Uh, yet, in spite of poverty, people seemed to be extremely happy. That is a very strange thing to encounter because it it immediately goes against everything that you've been led to expect is the source of happiness. And spiritually, I had been on a sort of search, a spiritual search since I was, you know, 14 or 15, and questioning the, the religion that I'd come from, Catholicism. And I'd looked through lots of different religions. Um, and I'd actually, probably at that stage, if you're talking about six months before, come up against what I could call a brick wall. I had really reached a stage where I'd begun to think there were no answers, there was no spiritual dimension to the human being, and that maybe happiness really was just about having money, and maybe I just didn't have enough money. And in that process of thinking about making money, I thought, well, you know, the secret, the key to happiness surely is going to be that you make the m maximum amount of money with the minimum amount of effort, because the purpose of money is only to enable you to enjoy yourself. Money itself can't make you happy. It's the things that you can buy and the things that you can do with the money. And if you're spending all of your time earning the money, then where are you going to enjoy yourself? So I thought, okay, well, where can I start? Let me start by looking at different people in the world, different cultures. Let's look through history and let's see if there's something there. And in that process of thinking, I was thinking about different nations and different civilizations. And, and then it suddenly sort of struck me wait a minute, those Saudi Arabians have been sitting on their camels for uh, I don't know how many hundreds of years uh, praying to Allah, and um, and they've got all this money. I said, well, that sounds good. Very little effort, lots of money. I said, let me start researching, see what uh, I can find out about this. And um, I obviously knew their religion was Islam, and their book was the Qur'an. And so I thought to myself, okay, let's start by reading the Qur'an, see what that has to say, well, what I can find out there. And that's, that's really how I came upon Islam. Uh, and it was actually reading the Qur'an itself. When I actually started to read this translation of the Qur'an, it dawned on me as I was reading it, is that this was the very thing that I'd been looking for all that time. Here it was, truth from God, revelation from God. I just said to myself, well, if, if I have ever read a book from that's from God, it's this. Um, but that's how I discovered Islam. But the problem was really is that when I actually was faced with a challenge, and the real challenge was my girlfriend. That was the real challenge. When my girlfriend found out I had become Muslim, she totally freaked out. And, uh, and actually at that stage, I just gave up on the whole project of, you know, I gave up on it really basically, of actually being of living Islam. I mean, I still, I still remember that I used to go to parties, um, you know, and I used to sit down with people, drunk, and talk to them about Islam and tell them what a brilliant religion it was and tell them I'm a Muslim and they would be asking me, well, tell us more. And I said, well, I'm too wasted. I, I can't, you know. But read the Quran; it's good, you know. 
and that's when I that's why I say that you know you know I accepted Islam but I wasn't a Muslim because if you looked at my life there was nothing different except I would have to say one thing was different I was more miserable than I had, had ever been in my entire existence because I now knew the truth and I also knew that I was not living the truth that I knew and that was the worst condition and perhaps is the worst condition that you can ever be in and uh, you know things became you could say also worse between me and my girlfriend ironically the one that I had you know given up practicing Islam for because she was freaked out things became worse uh, between me and her and I think it was a combination of all of those things just led to a type of situation where literally I just couldn't take it anymore and um, I decided to go and stay with my parents in Portugal. My parents live in Portugal. And it was there really that I just began to realize uh, things came into focus. I began to realize, okay, my life is a mess. I know why it's a mess. Because I found the truth. I know what the truth is. And I'm not following it. And I just made this dua to Allah. I prayed to God. I said, oh Allah. I said, just let her call. I, I, I promise that if she calls me today, I will pray to you five times a day. I mean, what, as if Allah needed me to pray to him. But I mean, you know, that's, the, but I mean, you know, it was like, I, I, you know, Allah will pray to you five times a day. I can't promise I will give up any other bad things or I can do anything else, but I will pray five times a day. And I promise that I will never stop praying five times a day. And after I made this dua, that same afternoon, just a couple of hours later, she phoned. And I was actually working in the garden at the time and building a wall. I still pass that wall and look at it and think, that's the wall that I was building when that thing happened to me. And my dad came down and he said, well, it's, you know, it's your girlfriend on the phone. Don't want to mention her name. And, uh, and I put, put down the spade and I don't even remember what she said because... I wasn't thinking about her anymore. I was thinking about, I have to go and pray now. So I just, just put down the phone and went and took a ghusl, took a bath and started praying. And that's it. And uh, and really, that's the difference between being a Muslim and not being a Muslim. When you establish the prayer, your life changes. And really, just praying five times a day changed my life. And, and that's it, really. And that's when I say, that's when I became Muslim. That's the day. I became a Muslim. Islam, without doubt, is the path to true happiness in life. It is the tr the real path to true happiness. And my people ask me, so what is it like now that you're Muslim compared to how it was before? Well, it's like being dead and then being alive. It's like being blind and then seeing. It's like being in darkness and then being in the light. That's how different understanding the truth of the Qur'an and the teachings of Islam is to that way of life that is away from that. 